Hello everybody, it's Mr. Garrett here. We're gonna try something new today. Um, we're gonna to try talking through a PowerPoint presentation, see how you like it. Please comment on it um, to let me know how it goes. So today we're gonna to talk about the remainder and factor theorems, which is still part of section 5.5 in uh, your book. And the first thing we're gonna say is about the remainder theorem. The remainder theorem basically states that if a polynomial f of x is divided by x minus k, then the remainder is r equals f of k. What is this saying? It's saying if I take a polynomial and divide it by x minus a number or x plus a number, I can figure out the remainder by just simply plugging that number into the polynomial, and that would be my answer. Um, for example, if we had x squared plus 2x minus 3 divided by x minus 2, I could find this remainder by simply plugging 2 in for x. Um, this would give me 2 squared plus 2 times 2 minus 3. This would be direct substitution, and that would give me an answer of 5. I could also do synthetic substitution. If I did synthetic substitution, I would have uh, the 2 in the box, draw down the coefficients, 1, 2, and negative 3. I'd bring down the 1, multiply up, give me 2. 2 plus 2 is 4. 2 times 4 is 8, and then negative 3 plus 8 is 5, and that would be my remainder. Both scenarios, you can tell we get our remainder um, by doing that synthetic or direct substitution. Now the factor theorem also leads us to some other um, parts, and it says a polynomial f of x is a factor x minus k if and only if f of k is equal to 0. Relating this back to the remainder theorem means I want a remainder of zero in order for what I'm dividing by to be a factor. Now, this leads us to say that if k is a zero of f of x, then x minus k is a factor. So if two were a zero of f of x, x minus two would be a factor. If k is a solution of f of x, then x minus k is a factor of f of x, meaning if negative three was a solution, x minus negative 3 or x plus 3 would be a factor. And then x, if k is an x-intercept of the graph y equals f of x, x minus k is a factor of f of x. So if I saw that the graph crossed the x-axis at 3, I could say x minus 3 is a factor. Now what does all these factors have to do with anything? Well. Let's take a minute and go back to prime factorization. If you think about the prime factorization of 20, we break it down and we say, oh, well, 20 is equal to 2 times 10. And you think, okay, well, 20 divided by 2 is 10, and that's how I got these two numbers. I knew 2 went into 20, so I did 20 divided by 2 to get 10. I'm going to break it down even further by saying I know 2 also goes into 10, so 10 divided by 2 is 5, and that's how I get 2 times 2 times 5 is 20. Now, <clears throat> how did we get the other factors? Well, we simply divided our term by the original factor. We're going to do the same thing with polynomials. So when I see a polynomial like this, 3x cubed minus 4x squared minus 28x minus 16, and I know that x plus 2 is a factor, I can find the other factors by taking my original polynomial and dividing by x plus 2. So how can we factor this completely? I will simply take the x plus 2 and do synthetic division, knowing that uh, I'm going to plug in negative 2 and, and get 0. I'm going to go ahead and use synthetic division. So here's my 3. I go ahead and I bring it down. Negative 2 times 3 is negative 6. Negative 4 plus negative 6 is negative 10. Negative 10 times negative 2 is 20. Negative 28 plus 20 is negative 8. And then negative 2 times negative 8 is 16. Negative 16 plus 16 is 0. This is good. Um, getting a remainder of zero means that it is a factor. So using that information, I'm going to go ahead and write out the original polynomial, 3x cubed minus 4x squared minus 28x minus 16. Based on the division that I had done previously, I'll write the product as two factors. Um, x plus 2 was what we originally were told, and 3x squared minus 10x minus 8 was what I got through the synthetic, synthetic, thin, synthetic division. And then I can factor this 
cubic or quart, uh, quadratic trinomial um, by just factoring and breaking it up into 3x plus 2 and x minus 4. And so this is factored completely, x plus 2 times 3x plus 2 times x minus 4. Our other example is when I'm given a zero, and here I have a polynomial x cubed minus 2x squared minus 23x plus 60, and I'm being told that x equals 3 is a zero. Okay, well if x equals 3 is a zero, that means that x minus 3 is a factor, because f of 3 is equal to 0, x minus 3 is a factor, and I can use synthetic division to take our original polynomial and divide it by x minus 3. By dividing by x minus 3, I'm going to get x squared plus x minus 20, and I'm going to break that polynomial down into two factors. There's our original uh, polynomial, there's our two factors, and now I can take this x squared plus x minus 20, and I can split that up into x plus 5 and x minus 4 through factoring quadratics. This here are my, these are my three factors, x minus 3, x plus 5, and x minus 4, and I can now tell that 3, negative 5, and 4 are zeros, just like we did before with quadratics and earlier with polynomials. And so negative 5 and 4 are my other polynomials. So basically what we're going to be doing is we're going to be doing synthetic division to break down polynomials into simpler factors. So I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you uh, learned something and please let me know what you think, if you like this format better or if you like the old way. Thanks a lot and we'll talk to you tomorrow.